If you're like many people out there that often experience a burning sensation in your upper chest area after eating or drinking, you might find this information very interesting. According to the American College of Gastroenterology, over 60 million Americans suffer from this. That burning sensation is known as gastroesophageal reflux disease, better known as GERD or acid reflux. And this morning, as part of our My Health and Wellness series, we've invited medical expert Teresa Biber to educate us a little bit more on this topic. Good morning, Teresa. Good morning. Thanks so much for being here again. Thanks. No problem. Now, I was amazed to read this. Of 60 million. Unbelievable. And of those 60 million, 40% are taking medications twice a week I know. to just deal with this problem. So let's talk about the problem. GERD. What is it? Well, GERD simply refers to gastroesophageal reflux. Reflux simply means the return of something. So you're returning the digestive juices, those acids that are breaking down the food in your stomach, are returning back up into the esophagus, thereby refluxing up. And I can tell you, I, I know exactly what you're describing to me because my husband suffers from this, unfortunately. In the middle of the night, he'll wake up and he'll say, sweetie, it's this, it's this burning heat, and, and he holds his chest, and I feel terrible for him. I mean, what causes this? Well, essentially what happens is we have two valves in our esophagus, and we have an upper esophageal sphincter and a lower esophageal sphincter. So think of them always as a closed valve system. It's this lower esophageal sphincter that causes the problem. Now, normally, it stays tight, it stays closed, it stays locked, essentially, keeping all those acid and digestive juices in the stomach where they belong. Mm -hmm. But what happens in acid reflux is that sphincter relaxes, thereby allows an open port of entry for all of that acid to come up into the esophagus. Are there things that make it worse, like for example, let's say uh, foods? Absolutely. Foods are probably one of the bigger causes of it. Uh, spicy foods, fried and fatty foods, eating any kind of a large meal uh, will cause it to happen. Um, Alcohol, carbonated beverages, chocolate, peppermint, <laughs> all the good stuff. Citrus-based products and tomato-based products. And something else that we do, which the doctors have told my husband to stop doing, and we don't. We'll we'll eat, and this is terrible. At nine o'clock, ten o'clock. Don't tell me you lie down. We'll eat at ten o'clock at night, Teresa, and we go to sleep within seconds. It's so bad. It's terrible. If there is anything your viewers can take home from today's message, it is this. Please do not lie down for at least three hours after you eat or drink. Most people have no idea. They think an hour is sufficient, an hour is insufficient, because that digestive process is still occurring. And as long as those digestive processes are still occurring, you have a chance for reflux. Anyone lying down within three hours of eating a meal will have reflux. And speaking of lying down, they've even instructed my husband, and again, we don't do this either, to elevate his body in a position where he can sleep better at night. Talk yes. to us about what can be done. Yeah, and, and this is often a misconception as well. You talk about elevating the bed, elevating the head of the bed. And so what people think that means is they simply put more pillows behind their neck. The problem with that is all you're doing is causing neck problems because you're bringing yourself forward. What I want people to think about is you should, if you lay flat like this, what you want to do is you want to be at a slight angle, say 30 to 45 degrees. So you need something firm underneath your back. What you're trying to do is change the relationship between your throat and your stomach, thereby allowing gravity to keep those digestive juices down. So if you don't have some sort of a firm support, either through a bed wedge that you can buy at a medical supply store or by actually elevating the actual head of the bed up, you're probably not solving the problem. And something I didn't know about this problem is the fact that more serious problems can occur after you're diagnosed with GERD. Absolutely. Actually, it's probably the number one cause of esophageal cancer, which is pretty devastating, but it also can cause all kinds of oral and throat cancers. Mm -hmm. It can cause chronic laryngitis, voice problems, swallowing problems. You can develop what's called strictures, which is a tightening and narrowing of the esophagus that then has to be stretched open um, so that you can eat and drink normally. Now, is this age-related? A lot of people sometimes wonder. Well, you can. It, it is often uh, occurs in older people, but I have it and your husband has it, and we're obviously not that old. And even kids have and this. And babies have it and children have it, so it's pretty non-age discriminatory. I even sometimes, and you know, I don't think I have it, you probably will say I do, but I'll go <clears throat> once in a while. Uh, that's kind of a classic sign, or a little bit of coughing after you're yes. eating or drinking. That's a classic sign that you are refluxing up. So you may not have reflux disease per se, meaning it's chronic, but you may be refluxing at that period in time. So when should someone like myself or someone out there know that, hey, I gotta go get medical treatment for this? When you're experiencing those symptoms, say more than than twice a week and for any extended period of time, say for a month or more, you really should be seeking medical advice because it's a very serious condition. If you don't treat it appropriately, it can cause some pretty serious damage. Teresa, thank you so much. You're welcome. Great information, great advice. Glad to be here. And for more information, you should just go to thebalancingact.com slash acid reflux and learn more about this.